Hello, good morning. Coming to you live from the capital Jakarta, Indonesia. You are watching special reports on the Japanese Emperor's state visit to Jakarta, Indonesia. Naruto is here. I'm Rahmat Idris. Yes, and I'm Siska Becker, and we both are very excited, of course, to cover the first state visit by Emperor Naruhito. And this will mark a new chapter for the bilateral relations between Indonesia and Japan. A new chapter indeed, Siska, because the emperor himself chose Indonesia as his first destination after yeah. he was ordained as the emperor of Japan. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, exciting and interesting yeah. conversations on the table between the two uh, heads of state and also heads of government. Yes, and of course, to discuss this matter, we have someone very special Indeed. joining us in the studio today. Good morning to Bapak Teuku Reza Shah, the Associate Professor in International Relations from Pajajaran University. Good morning, Pak. Good morning to you. Ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. And this is also a perfect occasion to start saying, Ganbate. Oh, yes. It's for the rest of the next three hours because we're going to giving our audience out there a full coverage yes. of the state visits of Emperor Naruhito. Mr. Yes. Reza, how are you this morning? Very well. Thank you very much for inviting me and Anna to come from Bandung. All oh, right. Okay. We are always on a the pleasure. Same line there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Okay. Reza. Now, I think we are ready to see some live feed from uh, the Bogor Palace mm -hmm. where the emperor has arrived. Can we Indeed. have the live feed mm -hmm. to show our viewers? And as we see there on the other uh, side of the screen, mm -hmm. yep. we are giving you live pictures from the palace where President of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, has personally welcomed Emperor Naruhito to the palace. Yes, as we said before, this is Emperor Naruhito's first state visit since he ascended to the throne in 2019 mm. as the 126th Emperor of Japan. So this marks a very historic day for both nations. Right. And Siska, this is also in line with the traditions of our president welcoming heads of states, heads of governments to the country with an, uh, let's say, the official welcoming ceremony involving all the groups of uh, uh, military services. And this is indeed the welcoming ceremony of the state visit of Emperor Naruhito and also the Queen. Yes. We are observing now the national anthem. Kebangsaan dari kedua negara dilantunkan dan saat ini kedua pemimpin tengah melaksanakan inspeksi pasukan. Terlihat juga di sini pasukan anak-anak dengan menggunakan pakaian khas Indonesia berbaris menyambut kehadiran Kaisar Jepang ke Istana Kepresidenan Bogor. Kaisar Naruhito lahir pada tanggal 23 Februari tahun 1960 dan menggantikan sang ayah yang mulia Akihito sebagai Kaisar Jepang tepat pada tanggal 1 Mei tahun 2019. 
Sementara itu, Permaisuri Masako lahir pada tanggal 9 Desember tahun 1963. Dan Kaisar Naruhito bersama Permaisuri Masako menikah pada tanggal 9 Juni tahun 1963. Of course, is one of the Terlihat biggest events that he's attending during his seven-day visit to Indonesia. Now, as a first state visit done by the emperor and the empress, uh, I'm very interested to learn that many of his visits are actually very much cultural related. Exactly. Yeah. As both nations share such deep-rooted culture, yeah. uh, Japan and Indonesia, they both uh, uh, comprise of such strong traditions and cultures and ethnical values and for that particular topic we are very honored as we mentioned earlier to be joined by the lecturer on international relations from Universitas uh, Pajajaran or rather Pajajaran University of Indonesia Mr. Teku Reza Shah. Mr. Teku thank you very much for joining us in this conversation. would like to get your take on the significance of the state visit of the Emperor Naruhito and the Empress as well to Indonesia. This is very significant, yeah. Uh, this is his, the emperor's first international visit, yeah. Soon after he, uh, he, he was thrown, yeah. Yeah, ascended, yeah. Uh, descended. And then this is a very special visit by a very special emperor. Uh, because Japan, yeah, Japan is a, has a long, a long era of civilization, yeah. yeah. If we record the, the history of Japan, they have been there around 600 years BC, yeah, compared with Indonesia, who became an independent state in year 1945. So we are dealing here with two civilizations, which has different anthropo anthropological root, but at the same at the same time we had shared history. Yeah. If we refer to the last 100 years. Uh, last hundred year, especially before the Second World War, Japan had an extraordinary role in in the world, especially in Southeast Asia and East Asia. And this special visit uh, was also a response yeah, to our president's invitation. He himself visited Japan a year ago, yeah. and again he uh, re-invited re uh, Emperor uh, Naruhito to come, and he. he uh, he is the national leader of a civilized nation, and also he is someone with extraordinary credibility. Yeah. Okay. He, he studied uh, maritime transportation in UK at Oxford University, and he studied history inside the country. So in this case, uh, we, are, uh, we are dealing with a, a uh, more than just a statesman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone who has a deep understanding on the world okay. and who is specializing in maritime transportation. Yeah. And his wife is also extraordinary, yeah, the yeah. Empress, uh, Empress uh, Masako. Yeah? Yes. Someone from a diplomatic background grew up in the Soviet Union and also in the US. So before became the Empress of Japan, I, I'm sure, I believe that she had a native speaker level of, of two languages, yeah, English yeah. and also uh, Russian. And then later on, the Empress studied at, the, in, at, at Tokyo University and also at two top world universities, yeah. Oxford and Harvard. I Harvard. Think. Yeah. Mm. Yes. She graduated from Harvard. Yes, she yeah. studied economics. Yeah. And also, she became a diplomat at, uh, later on. Yeah. Yeah? So we are dealing with two extraordinary figures, yes. and also two extraordinary, extraordinary intellectuals. And I sincerely hope the Indonesians yeah. could learn yeah, yeah. that uh, that we could obtain lessons from this okay. short visit. Yeah, maybe one week. Yeah, maybe one week, less than one week. But uh, this visit has become. Um, global media attention mm -mm. and the good thing is for Japan it shows um, beautiful relations with Indonesia okay. and also Indonesia to to attract greater global attention okay. in terms of tourism investment yeah. and closer cooperation or oh, they are signing something there
Yes. We believe it's the guest book of the uh, presidential yeah. palace. So yes. it's been also uh, a common ritual. It's Siska. one of the tradition, yes. right? Exactly. For, for all. Us, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, guests to arrive okay. and then sign the. Yeah. Uh, you can see. Very special mm -hmm. guest book and then before being welcomed. Into yeah. So, Pareza, before we dive deeper into the yes. impact of this mm. state visit by Emperor yes. Naruhito to the bilateral relationship between Indonesia and Japan, mm. I would love to talk more actually about this two fascinating figures, as you mentioned before, mm. uh, Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako, who have now uh, sat on the throne since 2019. Yes. So although they are very much beloved in Japan, mm. they mm. are seen as very humble, mm. uh, close yeah. to the people. But yes. Truthfully speaking, internationally, they have not made themselves known because, as we say, this is the first state visit done by the couple. Real presence internationally. Yes. Yeah. So could you tell us more? What do you think this fascinating couple can bring as symbol of Japan, especially now in the modern world in 2023? Well, usually when we talk about uh, royalties, we tend to compare it yeah, with Buckingham Palace yeah. and then also the palace in, in, in Amsterdam and also a palace in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, and also a palace in uh, Brunei Darussalam. But Japan is unique here. They are so special. They do not make their uh, livelihood open to the public. Mm. So we need, this is something, uh, well, the results of two, more than 22,000 years of uh, tradition. Yeah. It is, this is how, how they portray themselves. It is good that uh, the, the emperor uh, he, he is in, in the line of throne, he's number 126 or yeah. 126? 126. 126 in the, in the long continuity yeah. of throne. I think it's the oldest monarch in the world right now. Yes. The oldest monarchy in the world. And he, One he, of the most powerful too. Yeah. Yes, and he is leading an era called Reiwa period. Yes. Our beautiful harmony. In this case, uh, if, if we are aware, uh, Japan, I know, uh, we know the, the capacity of Japan to lead economically in this world. We also understand the capacity of Japan to produce overseas, uh, direct, overseas direct assistance. Yeah. We also understand Japan's uh, adherence to international law. But at the same time, uh, they are having a great challenge. Okay. Uh, more and more people at the senior level, yeah, mm. age problem, yeah. and also at the same time they are seeing that Indonesia we are experiencing demographic bonus. Mm. If we may recall, Japan at the moment they have around 130 million population. Yeah, and I'm going such a uh, yes birth crisis too. <laughs> okay, at and the moment yeah. where yes. the rate of birth is much mm. lower than the rate yes. of yes. Uh, death in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the birth rate is. <laughs> going down, declining. Yeah. declining. Yeah. And at the same time, we are in Indonesia experiencing a demographic bonus. Yeah. Well, we, re we will reach a peak sometime in year 2030, where most of us are youngsters. The youngsters, the young guns, are people at the age of 20 till 40, who are full of initiative, full yeah. of confidence, ready to learn, ready to integrate themselves yeah. with the global market and full confidence. Well. Luckily, we have this kind of generation, yeah. but the problem is we are not supposed to talk too much on the quantity, but we need to think on the quality of this demographic bonus. So this is, I think, would be the, the area of uh, synergy between uh, Indonesia and Japan. Okay. Japan, uh, the, top number, the top fourth investors inside Indonesia, yeah. and then there are mm, our exporters number four and importer number five. I think we need to learn something from Japan, and I think yeah. uh, this uh, this visit will, will, will symbolize that the two nations, two uh, sovereign nations, two great leaders okay. are learning from each other. Okay, uh, Indonesia and Japan are indeed strategic partners to each other, and as you said before, yes. Japan is uh, the yes. third biggest yes. investor Investors. and trading partners yes. for Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia is seen as one of the suppliers for natural resources Correct. to Japan. Correct. And Japan is one of the biggest markets for electronic appliances, yes. automotive, Correct. and many other sectors that are now in the rise, actually. Correct. 
But as you said before, there are many aspects that can be uh, even more expanded. How oh, do yes. you think this visit can be beneficial to Indonesia and Japan in terms of trading partnership? When it comes to trading partnership, yeah, Japan's trade has been heavily tested. Yeah. If we recall 1945, soon after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan was collapsed. Yeah. National mm. confidence was not there. But the, key, the emperor at the time, Hirohito, believed on the quality of the Japanese teachers. One of his questions to his advisors were, how many teachers left do we have? Mm. And then he made an answer, we can survive. Mm. And they cannot, they, their went more than just survive. They began to lead the world. Yeah. In 15 to 20 years after the fall of Japan, meaning year 60, they began to make themselves the, the exporter of the world, even though at the time they were under strict supervision by the United States of America. Yeah? So the role of the king here is symbolic. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, he doesn't make a decisive decision because, because uh, following the constitution, the role of the king is symbolic, uh, the role of the emperor is symbolic. Yeah. And, but, but at the same time, he has a special right yeah, to, uh, to lead uh, the Diet or the Parliament. And then he, uh, he appoints uh, a government. And then he receives uh, foreign dignitaries, foreign ambassadors. And also he approves uh, Japan foreign uh, ambassadors overseas okay. to represent the land of the rising sun. Yeah. Well, even though his role is symbolic, what we can imagine, uh, uh, an, an emperor of the of a country of 2,600 years of experience, mm -hmm. yeah, civilization, as you civilization, said. Yeah. Yeah. and in this case in Japan, things are written, things have been well written, yeah. and then they uh, they can prove the best practices of themselves and the best practices of their partners in dealing with Japan thousand of years ago. So I think in this case the the emperor and the empress are coming not not only bringing japan as a nation but japan as a civilization huge civilization with with thick uh, academic uh, academic stock of information mm. uh, if, as we know in the past during the second world war they used to lead uh, southeast asia and uh, and east asia yeah. and of course they had uh, the best knowledge of the time and then with regard to the current relationship, uh, the spirit of the emperor is beautiful harmony. Uh, this is the era uh, he, uh, he, is, uh, he is leading. And I'm sure he would, be, he would represent the spirit to the countries he is visiting and also to the people he meets. Yeah? And then in this case, uh, of course, even though the role is symbolic, but I'm sure his arrival has attracted not only global attention, but especially Japan's businessmen, mm. wow. Japan okay. NGO, Japan people, Japan yeah. and Japan universities, Japan's yeah. media, all of them are focusing on Indonesia. Of course, they are seeing what they are seeing in Indonesia may be different with what they are seeing from the foreign media. Mm. Yeah. Peace, isn't it? Peaceful, stability, greenery, mm -mm. a long tradition hospitality, organized, and they see that the, uh, that, that the Indonesian president and the Japan's emperor greeted. And in this case, they greet not only with their hands, but in, in accordance to the yeah, Japanese With the culture, entire body gesture. Mm, yeah. Yes, uh, called, Mr. Reza. called Nihongo Kokoro, yeah? okay. mm. their hands, their head, yeah. their mind and their symbolism. Yeah. So this is the difference mm. between Japan and other countries mm. in the world. They are a very consistent country, mm. unlike most countries we know in this world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and very kind words too, <laughs> so if we may translate the ja ja Japanese words into yeah. uh, such hospitality. Uh, so we're still looking at live pictures from Bogor Presidential Palace, where currently uh, the two heads of uh, states, rather, and uh, the emperor of 
uh, Japan and President of Indonesia. So it's currently, they just finished the tree planting session yeah. and washing their hands. One of also the traditions uh, mm. upon visiting the palace. So we can see yeah. the entire vicinity of the palace comprising of uh, natural tropical forest, if I may say. Very uh, beautiful. Siska. Yeah, where uh, later on it yeah. will symbolize the long standing relations between yeah. uh, Indonesia and many nations, including this one, Japan. Yeah. And the tree planting ritual also actually symbolizes uh, one thing they have in common between Indonesia and Japan, their commitment mm. to sustainability. Exactly. And to it's, give positive yeah. contribution. It's been high on the agenda, Siska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the decarbonization yeah. of uh, uh, the globe, if yeah. I may say. Exactly. You mentioned, uh, Mr. Reza, that um, uh, once upon a time, probably uh, up to now, uh, Japan was the most influential nation, not only in, in, in uh, Asia, in East Asia, but the uh, whole wide world. Yeah. And on that note, uh, we mentioned that also earlier, that Indonesia has been chosen as the first destination for the emperor to visit. Would you care to share with us as to why this has become a decision for the emperor to do so? Um, amidst all of these other choices and plethora of destinations he can go yeah. to, he can build stronger partnerships with, but Indonesia comes first. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, firstly, was that also the fact that we were occupied by Jap <laughs> Japan for three years? <laughs> well, well, well. In the I think, past. Uh, while in Jakarta, the emperor will stay, the emperor and empress will stay at the Hotel Indonesia Kempinski. Oh, okay. It's at the Bundaran Hai. Okay. So we know where they stay. Oh, right. We know where they stay. Maybe <laughs> I should have not mentioned this in, uh, yeah. in public. Yeah? And this hotel was built by the Japanese in oh, era it? 1960s. Yeah. Okay. As a, yes, as a. We in Indonesia call this Pampasan Perang, yeah, yeah. Oh. as the result of the of past war. Yeah. Okay. This is what also they established a, a historical bridge somewhere in uh, Palembang, mm -mm. and then they also established a, a, a huge hotel somewhere in in uh, Labuan Ratu in, in West Java. So the emperor really understood the meaning of history. Okay, and that's the one. Yeah, being, being a scholar of history being himself. Being a scholar, he yeah. knew yeah. that history speaks. Yeah. History is the present politics and the present politics is the future history. He understood fully yeah. the, uh, our historical line. Especially uh, President Jokowi himself re-invited him a year ago. Okay, and then when he attended I, the G7 yes. summit. In Hiroshima in, just yeah. a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. This is reciprocal, do you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then hardly known by the public here. Yeah. There is a institution in Japan, Kyodo, okay. interviewed countries all over the world and also the people. Mm. What do they think of Japan? Mm. Yes. Luckily in Indonesia, more than 80% of Indonesians consider Japan as a friendly nation. Mm. We respect Japan. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of answer he did, uh, we cannot find in East Asian region, for example, South Korea, China, or North Korea, okay. Taiwan, because they really experienced uh, the Second World War. And, and also, the Emperor of, of, Emperor of Japan also witnessed yeah, the future of the two countries. We earlier on had mentioned uh, the, the, demographic, the demographic growth in Indonesian side, and also the declining population in Japan side. Yeah. And I'm sure the the emperor had also learned the results of collaboration between the mm. two countries at the state level and yeah. at the non-state level, especially at the city level, at the professional levels. Japan really mean the Nihongo Kokoro, meaning the integration of the mind, soul, and action. Mm. Okay. For example, I happen to be part of the program of Japan. Yeah? In 1983, mm -mm. I joined a program organized by the Prime Minister office. Uh, the program is called until today, uh, Ship for Southeast Asian Youth Program. I admire the capacity of Japan to learn from its neighbors mm. and the capacity of Japan to maintain relations until now. So uh, heaps of alumni of, Jap of, Indonesia, of, of Indonesians in Japan, they came back. They maintained the the, the qualities of Nihongo Kokoro into the Indonesian society. Yeah. And then since then, we can work nicely with our Japanese counterparts. And then, uh, and then we maintain not only communication at the formal level, but also at the, at the informal level. 
So in this case, for the Japanese, uh, they can say, I have brothers and sisters in all parts of Indonesia. The answer is right. Yeah. Because we used to be under one program called Nippon Maru. Mm. Uh, this is for me. Yeah. And also for, for other institutions, they have similar program. For example, for my colleague who used to study in Japan, yeah. until now they maintain relations with their, okay. with their, uh, with their supervisors. Yeah. And then they, uh, the supervisors <coughs> provided further opportunities for postgraduate, or for coursework in Japan, and then this is how it works. Yeah. So if, you, if we go to Indonesian universities or research institutions, we can find that the alumni coming from Japan, they have good relations with their uh, okay. previous institutions. Okay. But as if you don't mind, I want to touch on a subject that my colleague Rahmat mentioned earlier. I think it was very interesting that you mentioned about how Japan used to rule Indonesia exactly. for three and a half years yeah. because mm -hmm. actually in a press conference delivered by the emperor before he left for Indonesia yes. he okay. mentioned in some passing sentences yes. that he realized there were some hard times yes. happened yes. between Indonesia and Japan and one of the sites that he's going to visit while he's here in Indonesia is the Taman Makam Pahlawan the cemetery yes. for the fallen heroes do you think right. this is his way to make amends in a way for everything that has happened before historically between Japan and Indonesia and do you think this will be how Emperor Naruhito is different from his predecessors including his father Emperor Akihito? He, a bit of a sensitive wants, question. Yeah. We are yeah. Yeah. He answer. wants yeah. to produce a legacy. Mm. Okay. History was there. Yeah. History was there. We understood the essence of history. We understood each other without, without having to broadcast what happened. But mm. we knew. We knew. Uh, we do not forget. We do not forget. We, f we may forgive, yeah. but we do not forget. Yeah. But okay. dealing with, uh, with the emperor with excellent education, with excellent upbringing, yeah. I think his action speaks more than words. I think yeah. Indonesians know. And maybe we do not expect to, to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, he, maybe he would express it in his own way. Mm. Mm. Yeah, in his own way. Uh, we will witness the result of this visit, not from his promises okay. here, yeah, but what will he do in Japan? Because, because we never pressure Japan to, uh, to mention such sentence. Okay. We are not like South Korea. Mm. We are unlike <laughs> China. China yeah. We are yeah. unlike Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. They always pressure yeah. and they make these historical items as part of the discussion at mm. the public level okay. and also a direct pressure towards Japan's domestic constituents mm. to learn from well, they call it the wrongdoing of the past yeah. a generation. Yeah. Yeah. And, we and do our not huge population is also an attraction of its own, we believe. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, our demographic, the, yes. Yeah. 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 Japan is a scientific society. They can read mm. the graphics. Mm. We cannot fool the leaders about graphics. Yeah. It's all about yeah. facts for them. Facts. Yeah. They can yeah. see what will happen to Indonesia in the year 2025, mm. 230, 235, and where Japan is. Yeah. So in this case, I think yeah. the emperor will do his own way to convince the government okay. in Japan today and also the future government mm -mm. Uh, to take care of the ongoing beautiful relations with Indonesia. Mm. So we will know the results, not today, but maybe, maybe within one month after he comes back, after yeah. the 23rd of June, yeah? Yeah. I could imagine yeah. we would, exp well, we have, we have an umbrella called strategic partnership. Mm -hmm. But also there are items to be filled in, right. in the strategic partnership, for example, in the era of training. Right. We have IJPA, Indonesia, and Japan. And exchanges of yeah. different sectors. Yes. So we believe upon returning to Japan, uh, Siska yeah. and also Mr. Mm -hmm. Reza, uh, Emperor Naruhito will have words with yes. uh, Prime Minister oh, yes. yeah. Fumio yes. Kishida on, <laughs> yes. uh, on the visit. But this is also all the more interesting, uh, Mr. Reza, uh, to note the, the fact that the meeting today is held on the heels of a very interesting statement by the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rutte, who just recently acknowledged yeah. the independence of Indonesia. Yeah.
and yes, now yes, we have yes. words exactly. also yeah. from yes. Japan. Yeah. What does this all mean? Yeah. <laughs> these are now these acknowledgements. I think it marks a new chapter between exactly. Indonesia and all and of these, uh, yeah, these previous coloniz yeah. colonizations. I do what do you think about that? I do not have <laughs> the insights. Analysis? I do not have the inside story for this. Okay. Okay. Because when it comes to protocol, when it, when it comes to diplomacy with the top leaders, yeah. there are stated statements, okay. there are yeah. unstated statements, yeah. there are we, are we are playing like a wayang, is yeah. yeah. Things left people, unsaid in yeah. the past. Yeah. Yes, people see Sometimes the Sometimes it tells more actually. Exactly, when, there when, are when you don't unsaid. say them. That's right. <laughs> well, if I may comment on the Dutch things, yes. yeah. there is a great, the big question inside Indonesia. The statement from the Prime Minister Rutte. Yeah. Is it a de facto statement mm. or the jure statement? Oh, okay. I don't know what those mean. Yeah. Uh, well, the facto, well, the de facto is what the leaders say, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But the, the jure is something to be more legalized okay. Okay. In, the, yeah. in, the, in, yeah. the Netherlands, uh, in the Netherlands law. For example, if we refer to the 1945, mm. uh, 1945, we proclaim our independence was 1945, the August 1945, but for the Dutch, they consider Indonesian independence was soon after they trusted Indonesia to lead. Yeah. yeah. It was 1949, so there was a gap, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. What happened during that time? Who was responsible? Mm. The Dutch government or, Gen or, or uh, Westerling who, who, who caused uh, difficulties in the Indonesian security? Uh, who was in charge in the first aggression or the mm. second aggression? Yeah. So in this case, yeah. uh, this is a room for discussion, yeah. and I'm sure uh, and the hot debate. If hot I may debate. Say so. The two governments are talking <laughs> about yeah. this yeah. very seriously, okay. and very soft, uh, soft sentences. Okay. Right. Uh, because when it comes to, well, for the Dutch, they said Rutte mentioned for 1945. Mm -mm. It is the it is it was the it is de facto and it is the, also the jure. Mm -hmm. But we could also ask the question: When you uh, when you your top leader in this case the Queen uh, Wilhelmina met our uh, Vice President Muhammad Hatta in 1949, mm -mm. it was in the Dutch Parliament. Mm -mm. So some inside Indonesia could demand. The meaning of the jure was to re reenact the statement, not in Indonesia, mm. but in the Dutch Parliament. We are okay. waiting for that. So, so if if we, uh, this is the hearts. This is what you call not the doof, but the <laughs> eagle. Yeah? The eagle side of Indonesia. Mm. There would be a long, a long discussion. Okay. Right. Pareza, I think the yeah. history buffs watching right now are having a field day with exactly. all the new information and insights we're having. <laughs> we love to, uh, you know, have more discussions about this. But I think we have a, a video that we want to show our viewers for now. Exactly, and now we have a country profile of Japan as a member of G7, also G20, where Indonesia is a part of. Take a look at the country profile of Japan. Japan is an archipelagic country located west of the Pacific Ocean. The country has five main islands, namely Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, Kyushu, and Okinawa. Japan's closest neighbors include South and North Korea's China and Russia. Japan has a total population of around 125.58 million with median age of 48.4 years. Low fertility rate and a high number of elderly people caused Japan's population in a downtrend since 2009 when its populace was around 128.56 million. Japan is a constitutional monarchy, with emperor as the head of the state whose role is limited to ceremonial ones, and prime minister as the head of the government. The current emperor, Naruhito, succeeded his father, Akihito, 
the 62-year-old Naruhito became the 126th monarch of the country in May 2019. The current Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, has been at the office since October 2021. A seasoned politician and president of the Liberal Democratic Party, or LDP, Kishida was Japan's longest foreign minister, serving at the post from 2012 to 2017, and a strong supporter of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. For decades, Japan had been the world's second biggest economy after the United States. In more recent times, due to the emergence of China, Japanese economy ranked the third highest globally, ahead of Germany, the biggest economy in Europe. Japan's strong economy made it a member of the G7, which comprised of seven democratic industrial countries. The G7 held significant influence in shaping global trade trends as members of the grouping have strong currencies used in international trade, the vein of the globalized world we're living in. Japan is also a member of Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC and a prominent member of the East Asia Summit. In 2019, Japan held the presidency of the G20. On the security front, Japan joined hands with India, Australia and the US to establish quadrilateral security dialogue, more commonly known as Quad in two well, there you have it, the country profile of Japan, giving us uh, a thorough glimpse on the superpower country Japan and its trade strength and other strengths as well, cultural-wise as well, and its relation to Indonesia. So there's yeah. a lot of uh, aspects to explore, a lot of, as you said, uh, 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 Siska, a lot of uh, sectors to be uh, discussed on the table here for the yeah. two uh, heads of uh, government, heads of uh, states, rather, yes. uh, emperor and our president. Yeah. On top of that, this year actually marks a very special occasion for the two countries' relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this year marks the 65th, I think, anniversary of Indonesia and Japan's bilateral relationship mm. since they opened diplomatic relationships back in 1958. Mm. And then Indonesia has the chairmanship of ASEAN yeah. and Japan has the chairman of G7. G7 this year. What would all of this mean to the relationship between our two countries, Pareza? I think the emperor knows history was there and today we should make our relations vibrant yeah? in this case if we recall what happened to japan after 1945 they relied on the american uh, supervision okay? okay but they, at the same time they encouraged their local energies to grow up in this case their their discipline their their bushido spirit yeah. and their, the spirit of learning and then the principles of management they call it mm. kaizen yeah? Yeah. Yeah. kaizen uh, seri seton siketsu sitsuke yeah. they really yeah. employ and then they learn from the best in this case the americans the mm. european and okay. then they translated all the books all the journals into mm. japanese and then it took them only 20 years yeah. to make themselves a credible nation in east asia then after that, uh, credible nation, sometime in the year 1970s, in Asian Pacific region. Yeah. So I think this is, uh, and of course in the past, uh, we had a bad experience sometimes in the year 1974. Yeah? We yeah, call this, the call this uh, yeah. event the Malari. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the Malari uh, event where we in Indonesia found that all of the sudden, eh, Japan, uh, Japan uh, products occupied Indonesian markets. Japan technologies were there, and then Japan uh, automo automobile industries were there. Yeah. It shocked the Indonesian, and then it shocked uh, some of the elite inside Indonesia, and then Japan understood. Okay, okay, 
break. I need to, <laughs> to have a break at the moment. Okay. Uh, it was called, a, well, we in Indonesia call this a strategic retreat for a while, yeah? mm -hmm. because Japan understood uh, that uh, the development was so shocking for Southeast Asia. It happened only, not only in Indonesia, but also in Thailand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But since then, they realized on the importance of heart-to-heart uh, -heart, uh, communication, not only between the elite, but also between the leaders at the lower layers and also uh, relationship. People to people connection Correct. too. Uh, Correct. So, yeah. uh, in theory, it's called P2P, people to yeah. people, G2G, government to government, mm -hmm. U to U, and then C to C, city to city. Yeah. Ah, that's why they are coming. Right. And they are visiting <laughs> one city in Indonesia <laughs> called yeah. Yogyakarta. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On, on that note, uh, yes. Mr. Reza, it's, uh, you mentioned that one of the items in the agenda of uh, Emperor was to, is to visit Yogyakarta. And as we know, Yogyakarta, another city in Japan, <laughs> Kyoto, has yeah. long shared the concept of sister mm. cities. A lot yes. of cooperations, mm. a lot of, they touch on many mm. sectors, mm. Uh, cultural exchanges mm. and, and many other things, including uh, trades and crafts, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. So uh, what does this mean for the, for the future of cooperations between the cities in Indonesia with this set precedence to other cities in Indonesia and other cities in Japan to follow suit? Well, it means a lot, yeah. Yogyakarta has a, has a sister city cooperation with Kyoto. And Kyoto was the former capital of Japan. From Kyoto to Kyoto. Mm. And then in the same way, Indonesia from Kartasura to Surakarta. Mm. Okay. okay. And in this case, uh, I think Japan would like well, to experience uh, the hospitality of, of people of Yogyakarta yeah. and also the statementship of the Sultan of, uh, of Yogyakarta. Yeah. Because he's a, he is a historian. Once a historian is always a historian. <laughs> he yeah. always compared the past, today and the future. Uh, okay. That's the historian way of thinking. Yeah. And always think, always see uh, the best practices from the past. He would like to see the best practices of Yogyakarta as it was practiced by the former, by the late Sultan Hamengkubuwono No. 9. The 9th. Yeah. The 9th. Who father. played a pivotal role also yes. in the independence of Indonesia. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was the historian. one who responsible with the movement from Jakarta to Yogyakarta. Yes. And he paid the salaries. Yeah. And he also paid for the transportation people from Jakarta to Yogyakarta. And he... Well, he permitted the government of Indonesia at the time to rule from Yogyakarta. So this is something mm, he would like to experience uh, at the place of origin. And also, in Yogyakarta is, is the, what we call it, uh, is, is famous for its culture, yes. its yeah. ability, its capacity to bridge uh, uh, the modern wisdom with the local wisdom and people live in quiet harmony. And to be honest, uh, to live in, 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 in Yogyakarta is more economical than living in Jakarta or Bandung, <laughs> isn't it? So this is, this is the essence uh, he would like to learn. He would, uh, I think he had the, the background information. But there would be time when, when our emperor will have a heart-to-heart -heart contact with yeah. the king of Yogyakarta. Yeah. Uh, and then the press are not permitted to listen something. Yeah. And I'm sure they would share their their best knowledge, their best wisdom, yeah. and also their best understanding on the history. Yeah. Yeah. And probably yes. the emperor would like to personally uh, make the comparison of living cost in Tokyo as in <laughs> Yogyakarta. <laughs> the stark contrast oh, right. of it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's got yeah, yeah, expensive. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Uh, high over there, it's very yeah, expensive. Yeah. One of the highest in the world, so let's yes. just face the fact. Yeah. It is going to be a very interesting meeting indeed between yes. Emperor Naruhito yes. and Sultan Hamengku Buwono. Yes. And it's going to yeah. be one of the highlights of his visit. Exactly. And we would love to talk more about that actually, not just about the similarities, between yes. the two cities, mm -hmm. between the two people, the mm -hmm. two cultures, but also the two rulers. There is one mm -hmm. similarity that mm -hmm. I would love to discuss mm -hmm. even further. Yeah. But mm -hmm. before that, okay. we actually want to show you the profile of the Japanese Emperor, Emperor Naruhito, who's on a week-long visit to Indonesia. Let's have a look. Naruhito. Original name Hiro no Miya Hat Naruhito was born on February 22, 1960, in Tokyo. 
He has served as the 126th Emperor of Japan since 2019, following the abdication of his father, Emperor Akihito. At birth, Naruhito became heir presumptive to the Japanese imperial throne, being the eldest son of Akihito, then the crown prince, and his wife Michiko, and grandson of the Emperor Hirohito. His status was elevated to that of Crown Prince in 1989, but was only formally invested on February 23, 1991, following the death of Hirohito and the accession of his father to the throne. Naruhito was raised in the Imperial Palace in central Tokyo and attended Gakushun University, graduating in 1982 with a bachelor's degree in history. He enrolled in a graduate program at Gakushun but interrupted his studies to spend two years from 1983 to 1985 in England researching marine transportation at Merton College, Oxford. Upon returning to Japan, he completed part of a doctoral program in Japanese history at Gakushin in 1988. He maintained ties with the university, becoming a guest researcher in 1992 and teaching the occasional class there. In 1993, Naruhito married Harvard graduate and diplomat Masako Owada. The couple has one daughter, Princess Aiko, who was born in 2001. There was some discussion in the Japanese government about changing the order of imperial succession to allow Aiko to become empress, but the debate was ended by the birth of a son, Prince Hisahito, to Prince Akishino, or Naruhito's younger brother, in 2006. As a result, the imperial succession would pass to Akishino's branch of family after Naruhito. Naruhito's accelerated path to the Japanese imperial throne began in August 2016 when Emperor Akihito made public his desire to abdicate due to his advancing age. The following year, the Diet, the National Legislature, modified the imperial household law of 1947, which had allowed for imperial succession to happen only upon the death of the emperor. Akihito formally declared his intention to abdicate in December 2017. On April 30, 2019, Akihito stepped down and Naruhito became the Emperor of Japan at midnight on May 1. There you have it, the brief uh, illustrations of the accession to throne of Emperor uh, Naruhito back in 2019. It's been yeah. about four years now. Yes. And uh, we also saw some visuals, as is kind of also Mr. Reza, how he is such a beloved figure in Japan, which is shared, if I might say, by our, uh, by our Indonesians in Yogyakarta, how much yes. they love the figure of uh, His Majesty Sri Sultan Hamengkubuwono X, yes. the Sultan of Yogyakarta, which Emperor himself will be visiting in a matter of, of, of days. So do you think that this is something you mentioned, Siska, yeah. semblance of similarities between these two figures, being beloved by their people so much? Yes, they are beloved by their people. Because if we go to Japan, based on the survey done by Kyodo, they believe here that the king, uh, that the emperor, they receive about 80% love from the people. Okay. But at the same time, they also love the Empress. Mm. Same story with the, if we go to uh, Yogyakarta. Yeah. Uh, the way the people express their loyalty and love to the king of Jogja, uh, we cannot explain this, but we can sense. Mm. From the way they call the name of the king and then from the way they mention, yeah. and then the way they put themselves, and then the way they comment if we mention the name of their king improperly. Mm. Okay. They will correct our oh. statement. And then uh, the people in Yogyakarta, they are loyal to the nation, yes, but they are also always looking for the leadership from the king of Yogyakarta.
Yeah. Same story with Japan. Yeah? Uh, but inter interestingly, Kyodo Media, Kyodo Agency, question also, what do you think of the future of Japan? Because the current uh, emperor, Naruhito, has no, has no son. Yeah. Mm. So, following Japan constitution, I think leadership should follow the male line. So very patriarchal. It is yeah. very patriarchal. Mm -hmm. But for some people in Japan, they do not object if the next ruler are female, the matrilineal. Mm. And in this case, the, the, uh, what is happening here is a debate here, yeah. the yeah. public debate, not only in the public, but also among the parliament. Because okay. some of them thinking, do we need to revise the constitution? So at the moment, this is, uh, if we are confused, okay, we are Indonesians confused, but the fellow, our fellow Japanese are also confused because they, they are thinking, who will be the next in line? Well, for them, uh, it is okay to have uh, Empress, uh, Empress Masako, but for they who are believing on the line, they think, why don't we think on the emperor's uncle, Prince mm. Hitachi. Princess Aiko. Prin, uh, the uncle. Uncle, Prince yeah. Prince Hitachi, the brother of the, or the, brother of of the previous the emperor. emperor. Yes, right? the younger brother at the age of 84. Yeah. Mm. And then also the younger brother of our uh, Emperor Naruhito, his name is Hisahito. Yeah. His age is 54. So I think this uh, Prince Hisahito is, is in the first line to be continued by his son, Prince Akishino meaning the emperor uh, nephew yeah he's still he's very young yeah? yes and then the third one is prince hitachi uh, the uncle of uh, of emperor naruhito it, it's yeah. up to the japanese to decide yeah. but i'm sure japan uh, their culture is old and their uh, their understanding of statesmanship is also good mm. they have a capacity to maintain uh, differences in such a way without having to be known and becoming international issue. I think they have a mechanism for this and I believe they can settle it uh, quietly. Okay. Uh, unlike in other countries which will involve the separation of the kingdom, I think it will not uh, okay. happen to Japan. Yeah. Yeah. They believe on the quality of their uh, constitution. They believe on the quality of their management. Okay. In this case, a good governance. Yeah. Yeah. They also understand the qualities of the business people called good corporate governance. Yeah. So I think uh, they have their own way yeah. to, uh, our, to our handle. Our closer, uh, uh, closer uh, neighboring countries, Thailand, for example, mm -hmm. the monarch has been recently, um, you know, demonstrated against, been mm -hmm. opposed by especially the younger mm -hmm. uh, generation. So that's uh, that shows how. Uh, the current ruling monarch is not always in line with yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the uh, right. ongoing democracy in the yeah. country. Yeah, it's interesting you should mention that, Pareza, because it has been widely debated in Japan, Correct. not only about the mm. aging population issue, Correct. as you mentioned Correct. before, but also that Japan is running out of male heirs. That's, that's the headline yeah. in Japan. So understandably, uh, everybody is discussing about the option mm. of having female mm. heirs, mm -hmm. especially yeah. now in the modern world where exactly. it is more open, uh, the position between female and males are yeah. seen as more, yeah. you know, uh, on the same uh, level. But what do you think this means for the future of Japan, especially in relations to cooperation with Indonesia? Do you think they will be more open to progressive ideas? Well, we're going to do this very sh uh, short, Mr. Reza, because yes. as we look at the live uh, pictures ah. coming in from the Bogor Palace, the two uh, state figures, our president and emperor of Japan, is ready to deliver the press conference. So we're going to have to hold on yes. on your answer to that as we join our colleagues over at Bogor Palace to listen in to the press conference. Have a listen. Bapak Ibu yang berbahagia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Selamat pagi. Marilah kita simak bersama pernyataan pers dari kedua pimpinan negara. Yang terhormat Presiden Republik Indonesia, Bapak Joko Widodo. Kami persilakan. Selamat pagi. 
suatu kehormatan bagi saya dan Ibu Negara menyambut kedatangan Sri Baginda Kaisar dan Sri Baginda Permesuri Jepang di Istana Kepresidenan Bogor Indonesia pada pagi hari ini. Saya merasa sangat sangat terhormat karena Indonesia menjadi tujuan Indonesia. pertama kunjungan ke negara And we truly appreciate you making Indonesia as your first destination of state visit. Kunjungan Sri Baginda Kaisar beserta Sri Baginda Permesuri ke Indonesia semakin memperkokoh fondasi persahabatan di antara the visit will further strengthen the foundations of relations between our countries. Fondasi kokoh seperti ini diperlukan bagi pengembangan kemitraan strategis dua negara kita. This foundation is highly essential to further expand our relations, particularly in economic sector. Persahabatan antar masyarakat. Friendships between our societies and countries, Indonesia and Japan, may continue to nourish, to be nurtured in the future. We hope Your Majesty's visit to Indonesia will bring forth such a great impressions to our long-lasting. Relations and bring forth happiness and prosperity. And we wish the best for the entire royal family members of the emperors. Again, thank you very much for your visit. Selanjutnya, Sri Baginda Kaisar Jepang Narihito, kami persilahkan. この度大統領のご招待により帰国を訪問することができましたことを私たち大変喜びうれしく思っております。もう大突然。まあ大統領がおっしゃいましたようにこの度の訪問はインドネシア訪問は私たちにとって初めての訪問となりました。<笑> この滞在中、私たちは帰国の多様性に満ちた社会、文化について理解を深めるとともに、またインドネシアの歴史、そしてまたこの両国間の友好親善の増進に今まで尽くしてこられた方々の歴史にも思いを馳せたいと思っております。
um, replied by uh, the emperor himself. One word we understand was terima uh, kasih at the yes. end of it, which is arigatou yes. gozaimasu. So Very gracious of him <laughs> to include that word exactly. at the end so, of the speech. Master, so how do you say thank you in Indonesian <laughs> yeah. and take note of that? Uh, so Mr. Reza, what, uh, what, what's your analysis of mm -hmm. what our president has to say about this meeting in the joint, uh, joint press statement? So maybe the statement is less than five minutes here in yeah. two languages here. Yeah? Very concise, yeah. yeah. Very concise, succinct and short, yeah. Maybe one page each. It me but it doesn't mean they had a long uh, a short discussion. We are witnessing relations between two sovereign states who 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 can label themselves uh, having a strategic partnership, the relationship will involve, will involve all layers at the state level and also non-state level, we name it. Yeah. I'm sure the technical ministries will talk about education, yeah. defense, security, trade, and how to implement the, the, the principles under IJPA, for example. Yeah. Indonesia, Japan, ec uh, ec economic partnership, uh, organization then i think we will have a deep talk with regards for example indonesian workers in japan the the rules of the visa and then the capacity of japan education to empower indonesian education so that we can uh, deal with the blue collar areas of the job in japan uh, this is something to be discussed at the technical level of course uh, when it comes to this kind of discussion, it is closed. The media are not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. We will hear only the final statement. Yeah. Uh, but uniquely, they are choosing a place called Gria Angrek. Mm. Okay. This is a very specific place yeah. in the Bogor Botanical Garden. Mm. I have been to this place. What, what does that particular yeah. uh, corner of the palace symbolize, uh, Mr. Reza? Do you want me the to answer? Gria Angrek. <laughs> Do you want me to answer it? Yes, yeah, oh, yeah. yes please. If you would be so kind. <laughs> Gria Angrek uh. is a place where we put Angrek or orchids, or orchids from all yeah. parts of Indonesia. Okay, okay, from the first generation, second generation, today's generation. But for some embassies in Indonesia, mm -mm. this Gria Angrek is historical. Okay. Do you know which embassy For some I mean? embassies. Yes. Yeah. Does that include Japanese embassies? Uh, I haven't received invitation to go there. Okay. Okay. Allow me to mention one embassy in Indonesia who pays very high attention to this Korea Angrek. Mm. Which embassy is that? The, because they witness the, the, the beautiful relations between their president and the and the former president of Indonesia. Ah. Are you going to tell us which embassies or do we need to <laughs> guess? Well, 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 let me say straightforward. The, yes. name, the name of the country is our... If our good country, mm. the name is Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Oh, okay. In the second floor, you can find uh, pictures. For example, the meeting of our former president with the great leader of DPRK, Kim Il-sung. Mm. So annually, yeah. annually, people from uh, the Korea, so a North Korean embassy organize events in this uh, Gria Angrek. So, okay, it, it has a, uh, a biological, but it has a cultural symbolic, okay. it has mm. a historical symbolic, but maybe, maybe this moment will rekindle the, the emperor, mm. someone with historical understanding on the need to be more active in maintaining peace and stability mm. in in the Korean Peninsula. Okay. In the region. Yeah. And there's the also, region. to my knowledge, there's also a specific uh, breed, specific kind of orchid presented yes. by our founding yes. father, Sukarno II, Kim Il the then uh, leader of DPRK. Yes. Wow. yes. Uh, the name of the flower was Kim Il Sungya. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. we have one yeah. here kept at the uh, Gria Angrek and another one at Taman Mini Indonesia Indah. I see. And this a very Angrek, rare kind too, if I'm this not Angrek, this orchid, symbolize the truth in the relations mm. between Indonesia and North Korea. Okay. So, the, the, and the people in North Korea always uh, think on the beauty of this uh, orchid and they manage to produce the next generation 
which is bigger than what we have here. <laughs> bigger, more colorful, more beautiful, wow. and they nurture it in yeah. their uh, special place, okay. in their special lab. This is I, very I, fascinating. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard of orchid diplomacy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there you have it. State leaders. It's not only through culinary, but yes. also through flowers. flowers. Yes. <laughs> I wish to see that at the end of the trip, yeah. Pajokowi will also do the same to, uh, to Emperor Naruhito. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a special orchid under the name of Naruhito Heya uh, Hana, something, yeah? Hana that would be a flower. brilliant idea, Pareza. <laughs> well, yeah. I do not know. I hope the Indonesian Beautiful authorities gesture. pay attention <laughs> because he will stay until the 23rd of, the, yeah. of, the, of this month. Yeah. And during that time, Jokowi will have his birthday, isn't it? Ah, the 21st that's of right. June. right. Okay. This is from yeah. what I, I recall. Hopefully somebody is listening. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's going to be a gallery. Jokowi was born <laughs> on the 21st of June, yeah. 1961. A okay. couple of days to go. A couple of days to go, and I'm sure. Remember when Putin was here years ago under pa, uh, when Indonesia was led by Pak Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono? Yeah. Mm. Pak Susilo uh, break, broke the ice of the APEC, in the APEC summit by singing Happy Birthday to you. Mm. He yeah. sang and he played the guitar. I don't know how our current uh, top <laughs> leader will do to, uh, <laughs> to commemorate this very special visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting aspect right. of the visit uh, that we just mentioned now. We would love to ask you a few more questions, but before that, let's go to the next report. Rahman. Yeah, we do have another information coming in before we continue wow. on with the conversation, yeah. Mr. Reza. 2023 is a historic year for Indonesia and Japan as it marks the 65th anniversary of the two countries' resolutions. Not only that, this year is also an important year for the two countries where Indonesia holds the chairmanship of ASEAN while Japan assumes that of the G7 presidency. We have the report for you. Take a look. Indonesia and Japan have established a strong cooperation in various fields since the diplomatic relations were first opened 65 years ago and have agreed to further strengthen cooperation, especially in economy in general. The commitment to further strengthen economic cooperation was made during a meeting between President Joko Widodo and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida the sideline of the G7 summit in Hiroshima, Japan, in May 20, 2023. During the meeting, the president also discussed a number of issues related to improving the partnership between the two countries, one of which is the Indonesia-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. Indonesia hopes that the Ichipa negotiations can be completed by September 2023. In addition, the Indonesian President and Prime Minister Kishida also discussed trade and investment, as well as the acceleration of the Mass Rapid Transit, or MRT, construction project in Indonesia. Another matter discussed at the meeting was also related to energy transition. The President also encouraged Japan to accelerate the realization of its commitment of the 500 million US dollars for low carbon technology and early retirement of coal power plants as part of efforts to achieve net zero emission. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1958 through the government and private sectors, Japan has played a very important role for Indonesia's economic development of the city of Jakarta. From the agricultural sector, Japan also played a role in providing support in expanding irrigation areas up to 370,000 hectares, equivalent to six times the area of Jakarta, which is known as the Miracle of the Brantas and is currently known as the largest rice production center in the country. Japan is also one of Indonesia's trade partners. In 2022, the bilateral trade reached 42.2 billion US dollars. Indonesia's exports were recorded at 24.85 billion US dollars, while imports reached 17.18 billion US dollars. 
Indonesia recorded a surplus of 7.67 billion US dollars during the year. So as we can see from the feature presentation, yeah. this year marks a very special chapter in the relations between Japan and Indonesia. Not only we are celebrating 65 years of diplomatic relationship, but this year Indonesia holds the ASEAN chairmanship, yeah. Japan holds the G7 chairmanship, yeah. and now Emperor Naruhito makes his first state visit to Indonesia. Yeah, su now, yeah such a momentous year for both countries. Exactly. And now there were a lot of... Uh, uh, Japanese carbons there in the visual. <laughs> exactly. That's very exciting to see because yeah. we are very excited to see what does this mean for the future of the relationship. Yeah. When we go back to the statement made by our president, Joko Widodo, uh, yeah. just now, he mentioned particularly the economic sector. Exactly. What does this, this mean? Exactly. Despite yeah. all the things that you mentioned earlier, Mr. Reza, that uh, we can touch on culture, education, yeah. defense, mm -hmm. security, but one word he chose by the president was yeah. uh, economic uh, cooperation. So what's your take on this? Economic is the core of all kind of cooperation. I see. Economic and politics are two sides of a coin. So in this case, you would like to focus on economic care. In this case, uh, I, well, let's say Japan-ASEAN relations. Japan was among the first country to, to become the dialogue partner of ASEAN. So in using this platform, Japan has a capacity to deal at the collective level of ASEAN 5, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, then ASEAN 6, Brunei join in, and then ASEAN 7, Vietnam join in, ASEAN 8 and 9, uh, Laos and Myanmar, and ASEAN, the last one, ASEAN 10, Cambodia. Japan had a luxury of knowing ASEAN better than the European Union. Okay. And then since the beginning, since the era of 1970s, uh, ASEAN has, reached, has received huge proportion of Japan investment and also Japan overseas defense assistance. So considering Japan is a, not only a cultured country, but a civilized nation, but also a learning nation, so the relationship with Indonesia is very important here yeah, because Japan really understands the qualities of Indonesia. Because uh, when it comes to Asia Pacific, the role of Indonesia is there. No, inter no regional organizations, or no regional organizations, will emanate without, in without the presence of Indonesia or without the approval of Indonesia. Let's say, let's say, uh, before we had ASEAN, we had ASA. It didn't work until we joined in. Okay. And then after that, we had uh, APEC, yes. Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. At the same time, we had uh, RCEP, Indonesia is there. And then we had also IORA, Indian Ocean Rim Association, Indonesia is there. And also, at the moment, Japan, they are learning. While ASEAN has become a very successful regional organization, and they do not have it in Northeast Asia, if we have ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and over there, they do not have Northeast Association of Nations or mm. regional grouping. They don't have it. Japan aware on the qualities of Indonesia and also ASEAN. Okay. For example, we produce uh, peace dividends. Yeah. For them, the three countries in uh, East Asian region, we call them, uh, we have an, a formal institu institution called uh, dial uh, ASEAN plus three, in okay. this case Japan, China, and South, South Korea. Korea. Yeah. If they have problems among themselves, they talk. They talk inside ASEAN, uh, mm -hmm. at the forum called East Asian Summit, or ASEAN uh, Post Ministerial Meeting, or ASEAN Summit. They share their ideas because they want their ideas to be part of the peaceful idea, but not stated by them. Mm. That's why they need ASEAN. So that's why they, they, they understand the quality of ASEAN. For example, for the next summit sometime in September, countries, great countries, yeah, advanced economies, they have planned, they have scheduled the agenda of the top leaders in line with the ASEAN summit. That's so right. we will meet uh, Putin sometime in September, October. We'll meet uh, the American President Joe Biden. We'll meet the Prime Minister of Japan, Prime Minister yes. of... Australia, they are here, 
And of course, they wanted the ideas to be to be considered part of the uh, jo ASEAN uh, Joint Declaration. Yeah. Uh, they know they know their limit, but also they know the capacities of uh, ASEAN to do so. So that's okay. why in the uh, in the in the long run, soon after signing the document, I think the doc uh, the the joint communique. I, I hope to witness the joint communique later on, yeah. Yeah. Because the discussion is confidential. Uh, we do not know who who are inside. Yeah. The media yeah. are not supposed yeah. we to be there. We have few ministers or yeah. businessmen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait for that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then with regards to the meeting, mm. I maybe I think the Japanese emperor will convey the message coming from the uh, Japan Parliament. Okay. Talking about the future of EJPA, Indonesia Japan. Oh. Economic partnership, and then we uh, an agreement. Yeah, A stands for agreement, and then maybe we would like uh, the emperor could say in private in a very soft uh, way mm. about the future contribution of Indonesia with regards to the dispute in the Korean Peninsula. Okay. Right. Because and we are not Taiwan we Strait. Yeah. yeah. I mean, could be. be and maybe reporting missiles over and over oh, again yes. from yes. North yes. Korea. And probably even South China Sea dispute. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. Well, maybe so, his statement are not his, <laughs> exactly. his statement are not supposed to be read in public. Yeah. 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 Mm. Because Japanese emperor are not supposed to. Yes. To I think give. he is barred actually from making political statements yes. by yeah. the constitution yes. in yeah. Japan. Which brings me to my next question to you, yeah. Mr. Reza, because as we know. Uh, we have now the visit of the Japanese mm -hmm. emperor and then on the other side mm -hmm. we have Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida who personally attended the G20 uh, meeting in Bali just yeah. a while ago. Mm -hmm. So how much of an um, agreement or cooperations can be produced by an emperor? Uh, will, will it be voiced through yeah. prime ministers upon returning? So uh, what, what, what are What's we talking the mechanism, about here? Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, how does it work? I wish to see uh, the work, the mechanism works in the same way with how Downing, Downing Street will deal with the Buckingham Palace. Ah, okay. Mm. Be, uh, yeah. British media are more open. Yeah. Yeah. They could monitor, uh, prior to the departure, who accompanied the Prime Minister, yeah, and who were active in the discussion, even though the, even though the dialogue with the Queen or the King were not mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in, in Japan, this is really confidential. Mm. But I think once the Prime Minister meet uh, the Emperor, I think the Emperor will utilize his, his uh, idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Okay. Idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Uh, where he will produce a statement, a very neutral statement, mm -hmm. a very wise statement, a very philosophical statement, okay. but the prime minister knows yeah. that this is what uh, this is what the palace expect. Yeah? Something to follow through after yeah. the, Correct. the soft statement, as Correct. you would yeah. say. So this is the this is the line clo uh, ended by the constitution of Japan. It is called a peace constitution uh, under the supervision of General MacArthur at the time, yeah. supreme commander of Allied forces. Because at the time the Americans or the West knew uh, that in Japan an emperor is called Amateras mm. or son of the son of the son of the sun, the, the, yeah, yeah, son of the sun, uh, Amateras, yeah. And then uh, that's why the line was closed. So the role of the emperor is only symbolical. But even though he's symbolical, he brings tradition of more than 2,000 years. So I think the Japanese elite, uh, they understand the symbols, symbolization of, symbolization coming from the, uh, uh, from the palace. Mm, even though the meeting ended sometime after, on the 23rd of, of this month, I think we have a great job inside Indonesia mm -hmm. to okay. follow up. Yeah. To follow up because this is a very rare visit, so I think Indonesian elites we have homework, how to speed up with the agreements, mm. and okay. and and also to make sure uh, that Japan will always always 
a source of inspiration for Indonesia. Yeah. Japan is always a, shore, a, a, a source of overseas defense assistance. And then this visit, I think, should have encouraged Indonesian elite yeah, to attract more Japanese investments. In this case, Japan's multinational corporations to invest more in Indonesia. Exactly. Because even though we have ASEAN 10, but internally we are competing among ourselves mm. okay. to attract Japanese investment. Especially with the projects in the new capital of Nusantara, yes. there's been a lot of invitations to invest <laughs> yes. to our partner countries. I think that will be one of the talking points, <laughs> exactly. actually. I believe so, too. <laughs> with the delegation from Japan. Because as we said before, the partnership mm. in the economic sector is oh, yeah. One of the biggest discussions that uh, must be uh, had now between the two countries. Mm. Uh, as we said before, Japan is Indonesia's third biggest trading partners. Mm. And we have a few humongous projects going on as yeah. we speak right yeah, now. That requires attention of yeah. investors out there. The MRT project yes. yeah. is still yes. going on. And then we have another mm. huge transportation project, a power plant project. And as you say, uh, Emperor Naruhito's presence here in Indonesia is actually a very strong statement yeah. by Japan to say that Indonesia is a strategic partner in the future. So I think everybody's expecting to see more investments from Japan coming to Indonesia. Is that fair to say, Pareza? Yes, but at the same time, uh, when it comes to investment, investment has no passport. Even though the king is here, mm. uh, the emperor is here, if we do not uh, make ourselves credible in the eyes of the Japanese, mm. I do not think investment will come. How do we make ourselves credible, Pareza? Well, we learn from the Japanese. Mm. They have a system called good governance okay. at the state level. And then good corporate governance at the public level, at the company's level. We need to raise our standard. Like that, step up our game. Step up and we <laughs> also need <laughs> to right. learn yeah. from Japan's way of management called mm. Kaizen. Mm. For example, when we do things, the plan must be clear, the roadmap must be there. Yeah. Mm. And then the plan should be based, uh, should be operated at the second layer yeah, with rules, norms, regulations based on efficiency and effectiveness. Okay. That's number two. Yeah. And number three, when it comes to adaptation, uh, we need to think, to consider the domestic audiences and the foreign audiences. Yeah. Okay. And then when it comes to change management, there must be stop gap and this stop gap must be, must be communicated to all layers inside the management. Mm. Yeah. And then for Japan, this is a country who think that process is as important as result. Yeah. Well, yeah. some countries think output must be done, output must be good, this yeah. is the timeline, mm -hmm. without exactly knowing the sanctification process of the process itself. To achieve yeah. the, the so-called result. Okay. Right. So we need to learn from Japan the meaning of Kaizen, Kaizen, and then the, we need to understand uh, the philosophy of Japanese called the discipline, and then their readiness to be responsible. Mm. If we see the Japanese uh, history, we learn why the part, part one of the war, yeah, the kamikaze, yeah. their commitment for success, mm. the pilots who fight against uh, the Allied forces Allied at that forces time. Yeah. And also at sea. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we learn also from a person called Yukio Mishima, who, who, who cannot accept the Japanese culture has been eroded by the Western culture. He committed suicide. And then in Japan companies, for example, they are ready to be paid less as long as the company can survive. Okay. So this is the areas we, we cannot replicate, but we need to, to learn how serious the Japanese are with their culture, with their management, with their doings. Okay. So are we ready for that? I hope so. Yes, right. we are very much looking forward to that. Yeah. Now, at the end of discussion, maybe, uh, you know, as a token of our appreciation for the visit of the Emperor Naruhito, maybe we can also speak up about our hopes and wishes for exactly. the future of the relationship between Japan and Indonesia. I, for one, 
really wish that the ongoing project of MRT can expand mm. to even greater extent in Jakarta and the surrounding area. What yeah. about you, Rahmat? What I do you echo, wish? I echo your wish. Hopefully, yeah. a Shinkansen will be operating soon that from would be Jakarta awesome. to Yogyakarta, <laughs> especially with the Two Majesties uh, yeah. <laughs> meeting uh, in a couple of days. But overall, we hope for a more uh, uh, sustainable yes. and stronger relations, mm. more exchanges of knowledge, partic yeah. particularly adopting their, their technology technologies and agricultures yeah. in mitigating yeah. disaster risks so those mm -hmm. are some of the things that we wish to truly learn from Japan and has become such a big uh, homework and headaches for yes. Indonesia so <laughs> hopefully uh, Japan can chip into the problem yeah. and what's yours uh, Mr. Uh, Reza just to cap off our yeah. conversation well, today we can make wish list <laughs> that's going to be a long one, one you're long one wish list okay what's, what's, what's on the top meter. of the list yeah Reza? just top five yeah. probably yeah <laughs> Consistency. Uh, consistency. Consistency. Inform the Japanese that we are consistent with our plan. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Right. We are consistent with our plan. This is our roadmap. Okay, let's discuss about the roadmap. And then if you want to help, we put it on paper. And then when you promote supervision, we will really learn from you. Mm, okay. So we need to make ourselves a good learner, a good partner and a committed partner. This is Japan, yeah. a country of 2,600 years of civilization. Yeah. Mm. And then are we ready? And then, of course, once this government is ready to make commitment, the blueprint is there, sh technically should be, sub should be continued with the next uh, administration, whoever they are. And in some countries, theoretically, this is called bipartisanship. Yeah? Mm. So the new government will take the best practices coming from the earlier government and then to mutually promote the, pro the, the already accepted, uh, or already agreed programs. Yeah. So okay. I, I hope, I have high hopes to this Japanese Emperor <laughs> Naruhito visit. Yeah. Pareza, thank you so much. We are very fortunate to have you here oh, to I'm share honored. your time, yeah. your extensive knowledge, yeah, your honored. passion of everything Japanese, it exactly. seems. Exactly. <laughs> we learned so much from you. Yeah. Thank you again, lecturer on international relations from Pajajaran University, Mr. Tegu Reza Shah, for your insights. We truly appreciate it. We hope you come again for our future programs here on TV on our world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pareza. Have a safe drive back to Bandung. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> Maybe take a Shinkansen too back to Bandung. Oh, no. that'd be a great <laughs> Idea, right? <laughs> in, in, August, in August, in August. Yeah. In the meantime, that brings our program a special report of the uh, Naruto visit uh, to Indonesia to a close, uh, yes. Siska. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Siska Becker. And I'm Rahmat Idris. Again, this is it. We have more exciting programs coming ahead on TV on Our World, so stay tuned. In the meantime, thank you for watching again and bye-bye.